Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a video that I've wanted to do for quite a long time really. I always kind of wanted to do this video about how to prepare, how to pack for a ski trip and I just thought it'd be useful for people if you're planning on going skiing or you've just booked a trip. This is a guide for you because I know it can be stressful to pack so <laughs> I'm going to talk you through my ski essentials, what I always pack when I go skiing. Um, some bits that you might want to invest a little more in and some bits that you don't really need to invest more in because I know it can be an expensive hobby so just some little tips and tricks that I've picked up from my ski trips I'm going to share with you today and I'm actually going to take all this off now because it's very very warm <laughs> right so first up we've got something that you'll know that you have to pack whether it's going to be really really cold really snowy or whether it's going to be quite sunny blue bird days you're always going to need a ski jacket when i first started out i got my first jacket from tk maxx and it was a roxy jacket still but it was like 30 40 quid and they can retail for about 150 ish maybe so yeah, I think it's good to get a good quality ski jacket but you don't always have to spend loads of money to keep an eye out on sales, keep an eye out on TK Maxx and if you find that you're planning on going on more ski trips, invest in a ski jacket because you won't regret it. So this is mine, it's from Roxy. I love Roxy ski jackets, they're my absolute favourite. I've had like two, I think I've had two now, so this one and the one that I got before. Um, and it's got a little orange accent so it's grey, black, orange. Yeah, it's just dead comfy, dead warm. Doesn't feel super thick, but it keeps the chill off you and it's really good. Let's think, key features. One of the things I would look out for in a ski jacket is ski pass pocket here. At first I had no idea what this was for. Um, it's just a small pocket here and you can put your ski pass in there. So it just makes it so much easier because when you go skiing, as you get on a lift or a gondola, there's um, turnstiles with scanners, so you scan your lift pass to get through the turnstile. But obviously, you've got all your gear on, you've got your gloves on that are really hard to like get anything out of your pockets. So it's just so much easier to have one of these. So you can just put your ski pass in there and you just kind of put your arm across and it's you're in, you're through. Another key feature I think it's called a snow skirt. So this bit here in the bottom of the jacket, you can just fasten it at the bottom here so it just keeps a really like tight grip around well this is quite a long jacket actually it's like a snowboarding jacket um, so it kind of sits on my hips I would say just below my hips and that stops say it's a really powdery day it stops powder going up into your jacket and then like making all your thermals wet and you'll just be generally horrible and cold yeah invest in a good ski jacket next Sal pets, these are mine, they're just black, you know. Um, I don't know where they're from, Hot Tuna apparently is what it's called. I think these are from Sports Direct. So I think I got these as like an emergency pair because I was like, oh, the Sal pets don't match my new jacket. <laughs> what? But they're quite good, they've lasted me. They're very, well, not that very thick, but they're quite thick. Got a nice fleecy lining, you can get zips on the bottom here so they go over your ski boots or your snowboard boots. You can put a belt on it if you want. There's nothing glamorous about these pants, they're just waterproof, which is the main thing, and they fit. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, these weren't that much money, so if you want to spend a bit more, if you don't want to, don't, because it doesn't really matter as long as they're waterproof. So let's go on to base layers next. I'd say you'd need one pair thermals for every ski day just so you can have a fresh pair on it's quite nice it feels like a bit grotty if you wear like a pair of two days in a row because ugh, thermals are quite expensive if you buy like ski thermals apart from if you go you can get them from like Aldi and Lidl and places like that if, if you're quite lucky and you catch them in store but if I'm going for a week I need like seven pairs I'm not going to spend all that money on dedicated ski thermals for each one because I mean I would if I could but I'm I can't afford that kind of thing. So I found these kind of like, I think they're running tops from Primark. Yeah, from Primark. So it's part of their workout range. They've got a nice pattern, I think. They look quite flattering on, so I got a few of these in different colours. Um, I think it was last year, but I'm sure they have like a new version of them. But they're just stretchy workout tops, long sleeve, quite high necked, and they just 
they do the job you need to layer when you snow when you ski and so these are perfect. Um, so over the top of my base layer I'll wear just kind of like a thin fleece. This is from Roxy. You can see it's got a cool little pattern down the side. I mean this, I feel like you need at least one pair of like cool base layers because a lot of the time you'll go off race ski afterwards or like midday and ski and you kind of take your jacket off. It's nice just to have like a cool layer that you can kind of whip out. And this is my favourite really. It's super, super flattering. It's not too thick of a fleece, it's very light fleece, but I feel like that's the key is to layer lightly. So this is great. And then I tend to wear leggings underneath as well. Um, I've got the matching pair here for my Roxy ones, really great. They've got kind of like a, a little bit of a fleece, ever so slight fleecy lining, which is really nice, keeps you nice and warm, nice elasticated waistband. But if you don't want to kind of fork out the money for those, because they are quite expensive, I would definitely recommend bringing along gym leggings, long sleeve gym tops. So I've got these from uh, Under Armour, which I got from getthelabel.com, and I really love Under Armour activewear. I just find it so like, it's really underrated I feel. It's really good quality. It's got this dead thick waistband and it's just got a really cool nice stripe design, nice bright coral down the side which is really cool. And these are actually part of their cold gear range so they've also got the same like fleecy lining as the Roxy ones as well so you don't always have to spend loads of money on thermals. Um, you can, if you shop around, you can get some really cheap ones. As long as you've got your light layers, you'll be fine, don't worry about it. Another thing I bring is a buff. So this is like a neck warmer basically. You can scrunch it up like this and you just, I don't want to put it around, but it goes around your neck and you can just pull it up over your face like this. This is perfect for when conditions get really snowy and you need to keep the snow off your face. Like when you're going down a hill and the snow is just cut, the snow and the ice icy cold snow is just like hitting your face and the wind as well can be super super cold obviously it's just really good to have one of these it's really thin but it just keeps keeps it off you without making your face too sweaty pick up one of these they're called they're just like a neck warmer but the brand is buff and a lot of people will call them a buff even if they're not a buff but yeah they're all the same I find really to be honest this one's from St Anton and it's the quality of this is the same as this so if you can pick up a cheap one grab a cheap one doesn't really matter but they're an essential i usually take two just so i can switch it up midway through the trip and not feel a bit gross having that on my face next up i was oh i forgot to mention you'll definitely want to take a few sports bras with you it's just so much comfier to wear a sports bra i've done trips where i've worn my actual normal bra and it just feels so uncomfortable so i just wouldn't do it ever again if you've got them bring them along with me. <laughs> if you've got them, bring them along with you because they're super useful to have and just give you a bit more support and comfort on the slopes. Next job, gloves. I mean, I'm really sad about these gloves at the moment. I don't even really want to show you them because I've lost my prized pair of gloves. <laughs> they are essential, which is why I've had to buy another pair, which are not as good. Um, but yeah, these are just, I mean, these are quite expensive actually. Don't buy expensive gloves if you don't want to. Like, I, I would just rather have a bog standard pair than have these, to be fair. Um, so just get a pair of waterproof, and if you get them quite thick, get, them, get ski gloves, but you know, just don't be too hung up on the brand name. You want them to fit really nicely, you want them to be easy to get on and off. Sometimes they have like little pockets, just, you can put your ski pass in, which is quite useful, unless you are prone to losing gloves which I clearly am, oh. I need to tell you about my gloves, basically. They were a pair of Roxy gloves, and they were from TK Maxx. They were just dead cheap, I think they were like 9 99 I think they can sell for about 50 quid sometimes, so ten, tenner was great, you know. And they were just so cool, they were black, they had like pink um, stitching on them, piping on them, and they also were <laughs> missing really tacky. I can't believe I'm even admitting this. But they had like uh, diamantes on the just tied around. <laughs> but I just thought they were I just thought they were so cool at the time. And I still think they're cool and I wish I just hope I can find them one day soon. But they also had elasticated you know like when you were a kid and you have mittens and your mum used to like tie them to your wrist so you wouldn't lose them. Well these had like elasticated like leashes 
which I think is a great idea. You find like, say you get to the top of the mountain and you want to take some pictures, you take gloves off, you have to make sure you put them somewhere safe and or like put them away or put them to the side. With the leashes you don't have to do that, you just whip them off and they're still attached so yeah. If you can get some gloves with leashes on, <laughs> that's what I would recommend. <laughs> but yeah, gloves are an essential one because um, you don't want cold, frostbitten hands. Goggles. See, I think the more you're in snow sports, the more you can treat yourself to like better stuff. Because I started off with some really crap goggles and they were silver reflective goggles. So those are great if you go somewhere and it's super sunny, but if you don't, they're really crap. And they were so scratched because I just didn't care about the most cheap goggles. But then it was last day and it was snowing and Matt, who at the time was you know, my little holiday romance <laughs> three years later. So he was like, do you want to go skiing? Like, it's amazing conditions. I'll take you up to the top and help you if you need to. You know, he was just dead good. He took me up and I could not see a thing. I was like, I was having a great time because it was powdery snow and all, but I couldn't see a thing. I couldn't see anything in front of me. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. So it got to the point where he was like, um, do you want to swap goggles? So he, he, gave me his like amber tinted goggles which are really good for those conditions because you can just see so much better um, and then he took my scratched reflective goggles <laughs> what a gem <laughs> I mean that's obviously where true love blossomed but we still laugh about that yeah so for my birthday he uh, kind of treated me to these dragon goggles I think dragon alliance maybe they're called but they're a really good quality pair of goggles and um, you can clip off the lens which is really useful so I have these ones which are like more of an orangey tint as you can see when the visibility is a bit less clear these are great and um, they also sort of a bit of reflectiveness on the front which i like because i don't like <laughs> no this sounds really weird but i like it's like when you wear sunglasses on holiday you like to just look and not have people being able to see right into your eyes that's probably like a weird introvert thing to say but yeah these are really good i can carry that around in this little pouch and I can put those in Matt's, well I don't take a backpack, but Matt does, so I can put those in his backpack and change them while I'm on the mountain, you know, because they're easy to change. And he has, or he did have, I don't know if he still does, he would have separate pairs, so even if you have to just bring along an extra pair in your bag, it's fine. But I would definitely recommend having sunny goggles and orange goggles for when the weather conditions are really poor. Another thing that you should definitely, definitely take with you or not, you don't have to necessarily take with you, you can rent while you're there. You should always have a helmet and being like the mom here. I think a lot of people have stories about why they've learned about why helmets are so important. It's the same with like cycling. But I had an experience in, where was it? I think it was Val Desert and it was when I was very new to snowboarding. It was my first experience really on the mountains. I was snowboarding, I was feeling a bit shaky and like nervous. I was on a really steep bit and it was narrow, super icy. There was people, like skiers just bombing past me and like really throwing me off. I think I've tried to do a turn and just like went absolutely skidding down this really steep bit. Slammed my head on the, the ice behind me. I think I was wearing a helmet actually because I'd had a bit of a, a run in the day before skiing when it was really the conditions were really really snowy and I it made me think I definitely need to wear a helmet so I wore a helmet that day. Thank god I did because even though I had a helmet on you know I could have knocked myself out like and maybe even worse if I wasn't wearing a helmet so yeah just wear a helmet do it they don't always look that cool I mean I think they look quite cool Maybe not with this bottle hat on. But yeah, this one's quite good. Um, we put our GoPro mount on the front and the goggles sit nicely on this little ledge here. This one's from Sandbox, um, dead comfy, but you know, just get whatever. Whatever protection you're in, do it. One thing I did want to recommend was a good pair of snow boots. So these ones are from Roxy, I'm like, you know, my fave. I think I got them in the sale actually, but they're just really good uh, lace up boots. They're waterproof, they've got good tread on the bottom, they've got fleecy like Sherpa lining. When you pack in for your ski holiday, you'll feel the urge to like put in like 
nice shoes. If you've got a pair of like waterproof, comfy, warm boots like this, you will not wear much else during the trip. For the most part, people don't dress up so, you know, you won't feel out of place in like what I would deem back at home as scruffy boots. You won't really feel out of place if you're wearing like these to dinner or whatever. And then, oh, the hat. <laughs> bring a woolly hat with you. I take this everywhere with me when I'm on a ski holiday so I can just whip it out when we go for lunch or stop for a drink or whatever. I'll take the helmet off, put this on, cover all my greasy hair. <laughs> I usually wear my hair like this actually when I'm skiing or I wear little like plaits at the side so this hat is perfect just to kind of bung over the top. Yeah so I bring a nice woolly hat. This one's from Topshop. It's got this nice little fluffy bubble um, and it's not real fur. It's just regular foam fur, acrylic, whatever it's made out of. Yeah, don't think that because you're going skiing you need to wear real fur because you don't. Don't do that. <laughs> if you're going by transfer to your resort, make sure you've got your documents for that. And one thing I would recommend though is hiring a car. This is what we're going to do for the next time we go. If you use the rental cars app, it's super easy. Um, you can get the app on your phone, search for a car, search for the dates. It shows you all the top car hire options and sometimes it's you know, it's less than you would think um, and sometimes it's worth it if you want to get to your resort quickly because I've done it before where I've been on a shared transfer. So we were like middle of the kind of drop off points but the coach couldn't actually get up to our hotel so we had to get an additional like taxi there. So it was a bit of a faff really actually um, and I kind of wish we'd just got a car because the drive itself is really nice so it's a good way to see more while you're on the trip as well because the views are stunning. Yeah, so I hope this video has been really useful for you and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you're going skiing, let me know where you're going skiing because I'd love to hear. Um, yeah, so until next time, bye!